Okay, so let's start. And hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depends on where you are in the world. Welcome, and thank you for taking time to attend our webinar today. We are very excited to host this joint webinar for you to learn about two wonderful open source projects for big data analytics, namely Apache IoTDB and Apache C Tunnel. Both are from the Apache Software Foundation. And about myself, my name is Ping Cheng Zeng. I am from Tamco, and I am devoted to promoting the application and uh, uh, development and application of Apache IoTDB, which is a time series database project. I am delighted to be your host for today's webinar. Apache IoTDB is a time series database management system that integrates data collection, data storage, management, and data analysis. It was designed for resolving the pain points in IoT. For example, massive data generation, uh, high frequency sampling, high costs of storage, low computational power of IoT devices, and so on. And the Apache C tunnel is a very easy to use, high performance distributed data integration system, which supports real-time synchronization of massive data and is compatible with virus, various data sources and is suitable for many complex synchronization session scenarios. In today's webinar, we have invited William Guo and Hao Nan Ho to introduce the design and specific features of both projects. William Guo has over 20 years experience in data science. He has worked in big data teams of many, at many famous companies like Teradata, IBM, Lenovo, and he was the former CTO of Analysis International. Besides, William is devoted to many open source projects. He's a member of the Apache Software Foundation and PMC member of Apache Dolphin Scheduler and CTunnel. And he is also the initiator of the Chinese community of ClickHouse. Hao Nan Ho has also has many years experience in big data. He has worked as software engineer at National Engineering Laboratory for big data software and also at the Tsinghua University. Meanwhile, Hao Nan has also uh, contributed to many open source projects and he's a PMC member of the Apache IoTDB. Also, he's my colleague at Timeco and as a senior database developer. Despite introducing William first, our topics will start with IoTDB and will be presented by Hanan firstly. If you have any questions during the talks, you could just type it in the chart and our panelists will answer it later. So now I would like to hand it over to Hanan. Hanan, would you like to share a screen? Okay. Okay. Uh, give me some time. Yeah. And your camera is you turn off. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, oh. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Hao Nan Ho, and I'm an LTDB PMC member. And welcome and thank you for the time to attend this webinar. Today, I'm happy here to share and talk about how about Apache LTDB storage efficiency. In this in this talk, I'm going to introduce three continents. Uh, first, I'm going, I'd like to talk about uh, IoT V version one one point zero architecture, which about which is about the uh, new distribution and uh, standalone architecture of of IoT DB. The uh, second part is the time series data file, uh, TS file. TS file is the uh, IOTDB's uh, file storage format. The third part, I would like to talk about the IOT LFM storage engine uh, structure. 
uh, which is used in uh, L2B for time series data storage engine. Uh, firstly, let me introduce the first part, uh, the LTDB 1.0 architecture. Uh, firstly, I would I would like to introduce some uh, in some rules about the LTDB cluster. First one is the config node. Config node is it's for managing the cluster node and the partition table. And it also uh, doing the cluster uh, task scheduling and load balancing. Mm. Second row is the data node. Data node is for managing the time series data and the metadata, the metadata which means some, uh, some schema info. And it also for queries, for query, such as the massive parallel processing, the computer engine. Uh, please look at the picture. Uh, we have some uh, some config node for cluster managing layer, and uh, for data layer, we have several data nodes for uh, storage and query, and um, some application layer can connect to the data layer for the service. Mm, the total architecture of IoTDB V version one is a uh, look like this. And we have some have some config nodes which contains the node manager and for data partition, load balance, task schedule, and the consensus. And so for data node, we have some port protocols. Uh, we have session, MQTT, REST API, and uh, JDBC to connect the client. We also have um, the query processing uh, module for such as uh, SQL parser, planner, optimizer, and the dispatcher. We have uh, the compute engine, which has, which supports uh, uh, the CQ trigger UTF and uh, some external library. Uh, in the data node, we have also a module to manage the schema info, which is called schema region. Uh, we have a different type, different format of schema to, to manage, such as schema file, some metadata log, and uh, the schema template, and uh, the, some cache. And uh, we have some data region to manage the, the data which uh, can doing the file compaction, manage the, the memory data, which called mem table, and uh, the disk data, which called ps file, and WL. Uh, we also have the consensus layer for data node, and we support uh, several different uh, consensus protocol, which has a uh, simple LT consensus and Redis. We also have um, some other module for data node, and we also support sync different data nodes data by the sync and the load module. We also support the metric module for man to monitor the whole this cluster strategy. Yeah. Oh, yes, we have also some uh, ecosystem such as to integrate, we have support uh, C tunnel, Blink, Kafka, and we also have some virtualization implications such as uh, the Grafana, Zeppelin, and we also develop our own workbench, uh, workbench tour for such as the TS file viewer on the LTDB workbench. Uh, for LTDB version one, we have uh, supports the following deploying mode. Uh, the first one is the lightweight standalone mode, which has an extremely high performance 
and but uh, and support uh, the high consistency consistency, but uh, we don't have some ex uh, some highly available feature. And for the default default mode, we support the extensible standalone, and um, it has the higher performance, higher extensibility, and support highly available. And for cluster mode, we have a high performance cluster mode, which is recommended by uh, our uh, our people. And we also support the strong consistency cluster mode. Okay, next I would like to introduce the lightweight standalone mode. This, this mode, we have a simplified consensus protocol, which means uh, we have uh, one config node and one data node. There, so we don't have uh, some uh, more replica. replica. So, uh, we support. We design this this mode for simplify one replica consensus protocol for better performance, and we also have uh, the optimized uh, executor by changing the network transport to the local method calling, and we also optimize the catch system to reduce the redundant catch. Uh, Okay, the third part, the second part of this talk is about the time series data file format, TS file. TS file is a column oriented, oriented file, file format for time series. Uh, we have uh, some experiments to show uh, the TS file is 85% disk space re reduced uh, compared with the InfluxDB. Uh, the total disk structure looks like this picture. We have uh, the first part is the data part and the, the second part is the index part. For the, for the data part, we have some different, different layer, different level, level. The first one is the chunk group. Uh, chunk group is the data of one device and in the chunk group, we have some different chunks, which means uh, we store the data of one environment under, the, under this device. And chunks, we have three different chunks, means a TS chunk, we store the time step and value together to the chunk. And time chunk is for the time step only and the value chunk for value only. In each in each chunks, we have some different page. Page also store the uh, data of one environment on the device, and page also have three three different kinds. For one, TS, TS page means uh, time step and value together, and a time page for time time step and value page for value. And we have some indexes, index structure for TS file. Uh, first one, I want to introduce the in series index. Uh, we have three level of statistics for the for this index. Or well, it means uh, pages and chunks files. The benefit is future is a. Uh, can feel this this structure can filter the data blocks, which means we can reduce the I/O and uh, materialize the view for the query, and uh, it also supports the aggregate function, and uh, we can return the result directly by the this statistics. And LT, and TS file also have some series index structure, which means uh, we have uh, some series metadata index tree, looks like uh, this picture, have different level. 
first a device and then the for the leap node we have the measurement and the measurement point to the uh, in series index which means time series metadata so the benefit is uh, we can manage a large no number of time series and for data in page we have different encoding and uh, compression algorithm uh, look at this table. We have a uh, different for each different data type. We have uh, some different encoding way for both. Have um, we have all we have both loosely and loosely encoding, and we have the compression for the second second level of compression compression way. And LTB also supports the that one processing algorithm STD. Uh, as you can see, we can if we have uh, such eleven points in LTB, and after we doing a flash and we use the STD, we can only uh, we can discard some uh, data points, and uh, we also we can only keep the some important data into LTV. Uh, so LTV have some three levels of compression. The processing flow is as below. Uh, first, we have some optional dead band processing, which is loosely and discard, directly discards some data points. And then we can do some encoding, some encoding and uh, to compress the data secondly. And then finally, we have to do some lossless compression to, and then we have got the, uh, some compressed data. Okay, TS file also supports loading external TS file by the SQL command. Uh, as you can see, we have if we have a LTV cluster, which means we have some we have a config node and some data node, and we also want to load some import some external test file, so we can use uh, the this SQL command that load load this uh, test file folder to load to imports this cast file to uh to the LTDB cluster. Uh, this, this feature is for database upgrade and for data migrate. And it also supports the um, auto create schema and the auto validate schema. Okay, the third part of this talk is uh, about the LTLSM, LTLSM storage engine structure, uh, which is the LTDB time series data storage engine. Okay, the total structure of the storage engine looks like this. The uh, new insert come, come from the client. We have a sequence data filter to discriminate the auto orders data or sequence data into the memory first. And then we uh, after the flush, we have got some disk file. Uh, also have uh, the auto order space and the sequence state space. And we also have the compaction to eliminate the auto, auto order data. Um, the benefit of this structure is uh, it can optimize the sequence data insert processing. It also improves the out of order data write performance. It also reduces the file compaction uh, write amplification. Okay, let me give, give you an uh, example about the total write process. Firstly, uh, when, uh, when the mem table size reaches the, the threshold, 
we can then the data will flush the into the disk, and then we can get the TS file look like this. Mm. And at the time, the LTB will delete the WAL, write a hide log. And then uh, in the memory, we can record the file index, uh, which means which is the TS file resource to record, record the uh, start time and end time of this device. Then if we have uh, these two new insert com, uh, the first one, the time step is two and uh, it's less than the, the end time three. So this time, th this data will go into the, uh, this auto order files. And uh, if the time step is four, it's uh, larger than the end time three. And they go to go into the sequence 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 space, and will be a new test file. And about how to manage the manage the memory data, we have a special special structure means uh, array pool. Uh, the new insert column. Uh, we will apply some needed type of array from a report to store the data. And after the data flushed to, to the disk, uh, we will return the array, the array pool. The benefit is uh, reduce, it can reduce the memory object initialization and GC. And it also adjusts the uh, proportion of each data type or array in array pool automatically by the data type uh, we inserted the data. And at the end, I hope to mention that CTANO support LTDB and the data source and uh, the destination. And the next talk will introduce more information about it. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any question, you can just ask me. Thank you, Honda, for the excellent presentation. You have already noticed that there are two questions in the chart. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, the first one is, what a compression ratio can be reached when data is stored in TS file? Uh, okay. Uh, I have some numbers. Uh, about the uh, uh, loose list compression uh, is about uh, 10 to 1. And for loosely compression, it's about uh, 100 to 1. Yeah, seems great. OK. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the second question is, can, can IoTDB be deployed on the cloud? Yes, of course. Uh, in our in our company time call, we have some uh, solution about the Kubernetes deployments. Yes, we have some solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, is there any other questions? Well, okay. So there, if there's if anyone has still cast questions, you can just type it in the chart later. And now we would like to hand it over to William and let him guide us to go deep through the C tunnel. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'd like to share some experience with the IoT DB swimming with C tunnel. Uh, and uh, I'm William. Uh, I am Apache Software Foundation member and also uh, the mentor of Apache Citano. And I used to work at the IBM, Teradata, Lenovo, CCC analysis. And uh, here is my agenda. Uh, I'd like to share some experience with uh, uh, IoTDB and Apache Citano. Uh, first, we'll, I will introduce what is Apache Citano. And then I will introduce you IoTDB swimming with Citano. And then I will give you an example for IoTDB and huh? CTANO. Can you hear me? Anything wrong? Okay. <laughs> and then 
And then I will tell you how to adopt IoT DB and C tunnel in your enterprise. So uh, let, 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 let's begin. Uh, the first part, I will tell you what is Apache C tunnel. I know, you know, IoT DB is a high performance time series database, right? You can collect data from uh, IoT devices or from Kafka into IoT DB. But how to transfer data from IoT DB to your cloud or transfer your data uh, to your data warehouse or data lake? Or how to um, sync data from IoT DB to your database or other big data platform? So, uh, C tunnel is the tool that uh, it just uh, synchronized data among different data sources. You know, uh, Apache C tunnel can synchronize data from um, many, many data sources, including IoT DB. And uh, then you can uh, sync data into other, other uh, big data platform or other uh, database. And it has its own engine called uh, C tunnel Zeta engine. And now it supports more than 100 database connectors. And uh, uh, in the last year, the connector growth is more than 300%. So it's a very, uh, grow very fast. So, and now it's a, it got uh, more than uh, 420, 22, uh, uh, so, sorry, 4,200 four, uh, 4, stars now. And I'd like to share some uh, uh, cool features of Apache C tunnel. First is a uh, high performance synchronized engine. Uh, we have uh, some test report that you can see that uh, is almost more than 30 uh, times faster than other synchronized engine. And the deployment is very simple uh, because uh, if you want to deploy Apache C tunnel, you need to deploy uh, HDFS, or Spark, or Flink, or other any other uh, other third party software, you can just uh, deploy it with a standalone mode in one uh, machine, or you can uh, deploy Apache C tunnel with a cluster mode with more than two or three machines. It's very easy to to deploy, and now it's uh, more it has more than one hundred uh, connectors. It can support uh, SaaS cloud database cloud storage, and also other on-prem data source like uh, data, uh, Oracle, uh, MySQL, DB2, uh, Teradata, Greenplum, or Kafka, or FTP file, and they, it, it has more than uh, 100 connectors. And uh, uh, C-Tunnel can ensure that uh, uh, you just uh, uh, synchronize data exactly once. That means uh, it can help you to resume from the breakpoint or roll back when the whole job failed. And uh, it has multi, uh, many, many design with a multi checkpoint uh, design that assures that your data will not be duplicated when the, when the uh, uh, data, database source is something error or, or, or the, the sync has some, some errors. And uh, uh, C-Tunnel supports, supports also CDC and batch mode. Uh, CDC means a change data capture. That means we can read the bin log of uh, MySQL, Postgres, DB2, or, or some database, and uh, just uh, synchronize them to, to the uh, target in real time. Uh, so for example, you can synchronize the MySQL to Kafka uh, in real time, or synchronize data from um, MySQL to IoT DB. <laughs> so we just uh, support both CDC and batch mode. And uh, of course, we support data, uh, data type mapping uh, and uh, row uh, or column filter and other transform uh, transformers. And I will introduce uh, in, in, in the later slide. And it's very easy to use. Uh, here is uh, the uh, connectors, what, what we have now. And it, is, it has more than 100 connectors to help you to integrate your data to anywhere. So you can see we just support both IoT DB and Influx DB. So that means you can just migrate from Influx DB to IoT DB with C tunnel. <laughs> it's very easy. And also you can synchronize data from IoT DB 
to your cloud with S3 file or Redshift or to Red, Red Redis or to Kafka or to any any um, destinations uh, in your enterprise. So uh, you, we can see there are so, so many, many uh, connectors that uh, Citano support. And uh, here I'd like to introduce uh, the Apache Citano architecture. The architecture is very simple. We have a source connector. That means we can read data and just transit to the Citano data format. And then we have the sync connector. That means we can write data to the database or data file in, in the data format that they, they know. And uh, we have uh, some uh, transformers. Uh, we have uh, filters, split, replace, UDF, SQL, something like that. Um, it seems a little complicated. Let me show, show you a little example. So here is an example of, uh, of a C-tunnel. When you use C-tunnel with LDDB and the other database, you can see it's very, very easy. Uh, you can just uh, define the data source with IoTDB, with uh, URL, uh, uh, username, password, and you can just uh, select, uh, data, select data from uh, IoTDB. And uh, uh, other parameter I will introduce, uh, I will introduce in the later in the later uh, deck. And uh, then you can use a transform to do to do some uh, uh, filter. For example, now we just uh, add something in our SQL, and then we can sync to the other database. Now here is an example to just a sync is also IoTDB, and you see that there is a very simple code that uh, is a SQL-like code to transfer data from one database to the other database. You don't care to know um, some, 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 some uh, complex features of uh, Kafka or Redshift or IoTDB. You just use the SQL-like uh, code to deploy, uh, to uh, implement the whole, uh, 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 whole program. So it's very easy, you see. So now I'd like to share, uh, share something that uh, IoTDB swim with the C-Tunnel. Uh, the first, you uh, just like uh, I just introduced to you, um, Citano has a, a source and a sync connector, and we just uh, uh, build the IoT source connector. And here is uh, some features that uh, IoT uh, uh, source connector in the Citano. The first uh, function we call the batch read devices, and uh, you know. Uh, IoTDB is not like uh, like uh, other database. It's uh, something designed for the IoT devices and uh, some uh, uh, some measurements and uh, some something like that. So uh, there's will be many many devices in the IoTDB, and if you simply just uh, use GDBC to syn synchronize data from IoTDB to MySQL, you will find that that will be many many tables. Because in IoT DB, one uh, I think one device just is something like a one table. <laughs> then if you uh, just synchronize data from uh, IoT DB to to MySQL, you will have uh, many many tables, one table to one devices. But it's not very good for uh, for 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 my for MySQL users to use, right? So. Uh, Citano IoT source connector, we have a function that we can use a, a line by device. That means we can integrate the whole uh, IoT DB uh, 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 async data with a different type, uh, with one column of uh, device named a different, uh, uh, in different uh, uh, IoT. IoT, IoT records, uh, device records, I think. I, and I, I will show you some example in, 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 in later. And also we have what we call a schema projection. Uh, that's another uh, feature. Uh, that means, you know, um, when we just select something in IoT DB, you just get the measurements, but you cannot get the, the time or device column. And we just, uh, can synchronize data and add the hidden column with uh, uh, time and device. So you can very easy to use if you synchronize data from uh, um, 
IoT DB to MySQL or to Redshift or to other database. And also we saw support data type mapping. And now uh, only vector in IoT DB not, is not supported by uh, the current version. And I think it will be supported in the, in the in the future. And also we support uh, we call a parallel loading. Uh, that means we can split by time and we can load the data not only one thread. We can load the data with several thread, and uh, we, it will accelerate the whole synchronization process. And also we support restore by split offset and the record split offset is date. That means I, I support exactly once. And uh, uh, we just uh, uh, support batch mode now, but now we just uh, didn't support the streaming mode. That, that means uh, CDC mode. And I think we will support CDC mode in the future. That's uh, the IoTDB source connector. And IoTDB connect, sync connector, we just uh, support other features. Uh, the, uh, the first one is we just, uh, uh, can insert not only the measurement, but also the uh, the device and metadata. You can select them in the C-tunnel row. That means we can just uh, insert uh, from uh, 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 MySQL or Kafka to IoTDB with the uh, device metadata. And also we support a uh, time step and also support uh, data type mapping and uh, batch submit. Batch submit, that means we just uh, uh, we are not uh, like a JDBC that we just uh, uh, synchronize data one record by the uh, uh, by the uh, and after the other uh, uh, record. We just uh, support uh, uh, insert uh, uh, a period of time of data, and then we can just uh, sub submit. And uh, after uh, an interval time, and then we make uh, another submit. And also we can support retry times and. Uh, uh, we just uh, support exactly once. So here is uh, what, what we have done with uh, IoT DB uh, connectors. And uh, here is a few, some, some features explanation. The first is uh, data type mapping. Uh, that means you can map IoT data, pipe, uh, data type to any data type that uh, CTANO support. Uh, now we support Boolean, uh, Boolean and uh, int and float, double and text in IoTDB. And when the data type uh, transfer to the CTANO data type, that means you can uh, sync the data from IoTDB to any database that CTANO supported. So that's the data, uh, data type mapping. And uh, the second one is a projection column uh, that, that I just mentioned. Uh, we support a projection um, time step column in IoT DB. Here is an example. We just uh, select uh, from IoT DB. And uh, actually, if we what we want is just uh, uh, insert them to uh, uh, MySQL, uh, IoT DB didn't have the time step. And if you have, uh, if, you use, use, uh, if you are using CTANO, it just, so we can just add uh, a field we call the time step, a TS, column that you can use the, the TS column as a time step in IoT DB. And just uh, you can load the data to uh, MySQL or, or S3 or Redshift with, with this column. And uh, this is the projection column uh, time step. And also we just uh, uh, support the projection column we call device name. Uh, that means we can, you just uh, have uh, many, many uh, uh, devices in IoT DB. And uh, we just uh, can use the select align by device. And then you, you will find that uh, uh, there will be a, a projection column called a device name. And uh, uh, you, now if you just uh, load data from IoT DB to MySQL or to other database, that means you will have a, a, a column called a device name. And uh, 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 this device name just mapping to the IoT DB device, so the device column. So this is what we call projection column for device name. And uh, also we have some, some other, other features. You can read the document online. And now we are like to give you an example for IoT DB and CTANO. 
And the first example is uh, IoT DB to console. It's very uh, easy for you to try. Now we just uh, give you the code that we just uh, read parallelly from uh, IoT DB and uh, write to the console. And uh, now we choose uh, 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 just uh, use uh, two uh, thread to do the C tunnel uh, synchronization. And uh, we use uh, uh, 24 partitions and uh, we just uh, define some time step. And here is uh, the code. Uh, you can you can see it's it's very easy that uh, here we will define the parallelism as two and the job mode batch and we just uh, uh, show you the code IOTDB the user password name pa password and a SQL and we just define the lower bound or an upper down bound and also define the partitions and then we will mapping this. Uh, different, uh, 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 different. Uh, I think different column in in uh, Citano. The first one is time step, yeah, TS one. Uh, we define it a big int, and the other column we call the device name. That's a projection column. We define it a string, and then because this is the 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 result from uh, IoT DB SQL, we just uh, temperature. We define it a float and uh, moisture with a big int. And then you will find that uh, here is uh, the uh, IoT DB uh, uh, select uh, SQL result is like this. And then when you use this uh, C tunnel code, you will, you will find the, uh, there will be the result on the console like this, you see? So if the sync, you can make the sync to MySQL or to to Redshift or to other things, yeah, and this uh, this data this these data will load to the any data source you want. So uh, this here is a very uh, easy example from IoT DB to console, and also here is an example from MySQL to IoT DB. We just uh, read MySQL and write to IoT DB. Now and now we just uh, uh, from a, uh, we just made it a, a batch batch write mode and a commit when uh, one uh, one thousand uh, uh, red calls or one thousand uh, or one or one second we will commit uh, commit the whole batch at, at that time and uh, we will extract uh, metadata uh, like uh, device time step and uh, measurement and uh, we use the, the story group as a root test group. And here is the example. We just uh, also used the, the uh, parallelism two and the job mode batch. That means we will read MySQL with a two thread. And now here's the source. We use the GDBC and the URL for MySQL and use the driver, uh, user, and password. And we just uh, uh, use a query from a MySQL. And then we can sync. The sync is IoTDB. We just used the URL, the username and the batch size and also batch interval time and use the story group. And uh, now here we use the key key device, you use the, the key device name and the time step. And the measurement fields is, is just a temperature and a moisture. So the, the MySQL result is, is right here. And then when we finish the C tunnel, we can use, we can see that uh, uh, the MySQL uh, uh, data will synchronize to IoT DB. And also you can read from um, Infox DB and write to IoT DB to do the migrations. So here's an example from uh, MySQL to IoT DB. And also, uh, if you have a uh, several cluster of IoT DB, you can just uh, read data from IoT DB and write to IoT DB. Here is uh, the example. And uh, you see it's a very easy, it's, a, it's a just like the source. And also you can transform because the column is different. You can, you can use the, some transform, like, uh, just a, a different column name here, I think. And then you use the sync connector. And then here is from one IoT DB to the other IoT DB. Now you can see the column name is different. So you can see it's a very easy for you to use. Uh, C tunnel uh, and uh, synchronize to synchronize data from IoT DB to any database or Kafka or 
or something uh, or to file or to cancel or to your cloud very easy to use and um, the the last part i like to uh, share with you is how to adopt iot db and ctano in your enterprise um here is uh, the uh, whole big data architecture with iot db and ctano now uh, i we as we know iot db can connect data from uh, sensor data or from logs from kafka and because we have a uh, a uh, CTANO connector of IoT DB, we just can read the data from IoT DB to Kafka or from uh, the uh, from IoT DB to uh, your uh, edge data st st stream like uh, uh, Doris, Dorox, or or ClickHouse or something like that. You can just uh, do some analysis in real time, and uh, also. Uh, we we uh, CTANO has a feature that we just uh, read one data source only once, and we can write uh, twice or more than twice, and uh, that means you can collect data from uh, IoT DB and uh, to write to Kafka and also write to your HD device and to your hoodie, and uh, you need them to read uh, the IoT DB in several times. So here is what we call the streaming data. And for the batch data, you can read the, the data from IoT DB and it's just a synchronized data to, to your Hive or to Hoodie or to your Snowflake or Terra data or something like that. And then you can use the, the, uh, some BI tools to see the result. And also, uh, if you are using Airflow or Dolphin Scheduler, you, you, you can also to do the, uh, uh, the workflow orchestration and to use the data to for the AI uh, uh, training or AI or PyTorch or TensorFlow training, something like that. And also you can use the CTANO connector to synchronize data from your Hive or from your database backward to your uh, Workday or other SaaS providers or to a rational uh, database or your or to your your to your to uh, your uh, uh, cloud cloud database. So. Uh, we so somebody called it reverse ETL, <laughs> but but uh, as you know, there will be uh, uh, many many connectors that help you to connect IoT DB to any data source in your enterprise. <laughs> and now it's uh, the history of Apache uh, C Tunnel and some roadmap. Uh, Apache C Tunnel was founded in 2000, 2017. And uh, we just entered the Apache incubator in 2020, in, in, the, uh, in, in December of uh, 2021. And uh, now we have uh, the, uh, the latest version uh, is uh, released by the last month. We just uh, support the uh, CDC and more than 100 connectors. And now we, what, what we are doing is to support not only the Citano Zeta, Zeta engine, but also the Flink uh, uh, 15 and the Spark 3. And also we now are doing something that uh, we can support a synchronized multi-table or the whole database from one uh, database to the other database. And uh, what we want is to, to also to support, we call it the schema evolution. Schema evolution, that means uh, uh, when you synchronize data, if you the, uh, the source table is changed, for example, there, uh, there will be more, uh, more columns is added. And then if you, we have the schema evolution feature, you needn't to change the CTANO code or needn't to change the target database, we will, uh, CTANO will help you to add some, some new column in your target database. That's called a Sigma evolution. And uh, if you are do uh, some CDC uh, or do some uh, batch mode, that will help you to, to synchronize data when the database have uh, many, many data tables. Uh, so that's what, what we are doing. Now we we have a uh, we have more than uh, uh, four thousand uh, stars in, in GitHub, and uh, now here is uh, some uh, resource. Uh, you can see. Let me try. Okay, so 
here is uh, the uh, we are our homepage, uh, ctunnel.apache.org. And you, if you are interested, you can just uh, go to the GitHub. You can see uh, now we have uh, many stars and uh, we have uh, many uh, contributors. And uh, uh, our uh, projects is uh, very active. And uh, uh, if you are interested about uh, that, you can, oh, sorry. Whoa, 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 uh, here. You can, if you want to learn more, you can just uh, use apachecitano.slack.com to uh, add in our Slack channel. And uh, also you can uh, visit Twitter with uh, AS of Citano or on the medium of citano.medium.com to see more some uh, topic or some uh, uh, articles uh, uh, we, we just write. And uh, if you are interested with Citano and uh, want to talk with someone, you can just uh, add me at my LinkedIn with uh, William K 2000. And uh, I'd like to connect with you in person. And uh, I think here is uh, almost uh, the, the whole introduc introduction with, uh, with my topic. And uh, thank you for everyone. Uh, do you have uh, some questions? So. Thank you very, very so much for wonderful talks. You have given us a very, very insightful and very clear uh, explanation of Citano and show us how easy to use and how powerful it is. And I noticed that there is a question which is submitted by a, a nominous uh, attendees. He has asked, uh, he or she has asked, does Apache Citano support user defined functions? Uh, UDF, yes, we, we support. We, uh, as I just mentioned, we just uh, support UDF functions. And uh, yes, yes, we, we, we support that. Yeah, uh, I just, uh, I think where is uh, support some uh, UDF support, UDF functions. Yeah, here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe this attendee has just uh, asked that too early before before you have shown this, this uh, <laughs> slide, yeah. yeah. Yep. And let's see if there are any other questions. And I'd like to share another uh, screenshot. Yeah, here. Yeah, as William has already shown, there are also some contact, okay. uh, contact information of William and, uh, and Hon uh, Honan. It's, uh, there's a barcode is of the Slack workspace. So you can just scan it to, to join the Slack workspace of both projects. And so if there are, there are if there are no more questions, from our attendees, we would like to thank everyone again for attending to this talk. We hope this could give you a very a good insight into both uh, projects. You could visit the homepage of uh, Apache IoTDB and Citano for more details, and also you can uh, just write an email or connect to our uh, to the two panelists of ours by LinkedIn or follow us on Twitter. And after the webinar, you will be directly, you will be automatically redirected to a survey uh, regarding the IoTDB and the Citano, which is completely voluntary and anonymous. You could you can leave us an, uh, your email address if you are uh, interested or uh, if you want to attend more of our events in the future. Otherwise, we won't get any personal information of yours. So uh, I think. Yeah, I didn't see any further questions, and I think we are done with today's webinar. And so I'd like to thank, thank all of you again and thank our uh, panelists. Thank William, thank Hanan for the, yep. the sharing and the presentation today. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank so you. I wish everyone a nice day and see you next time. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yeah.